you guys, I'm Chelsea here for Park City Television. I'm at Ritual Chocolate, joined by the owners and founders of the place, and I'm joined by Anna Davis and Robbie Stout. How are you guys this morning? Oh, we're wonderful, thank you. Thank you for being here. Absolutely, okay, I am so thrilled because chocolate tasting, and people make fun of me for this, but it is seriously one of my absolute favorite things. I love chocolate, and I'm so pleased that you guys are doing what you're doing, that you're here in Park City doing it. And we're gonna be going over kind of what makes you guys unique, because you get your cacao beans from all over. Tell me where. Well, we at the moment we're from four different um, areas around the world: uh, Madagascar, Belize, uh, Ecuador, and Peru. Wow. And they all have really different flavour depending on the bean variety, genetics, how they're grown. So there's a lot, a lot that goes into the farming side of cacao. Excellent. Well, Robbie, tell us a little bit about what makes those regions and farms unique. Why did you guys go with them? Well, uh, first of all. It, it, you know, each of these places will taste different because of what's called terroir. So that's soil, that's weather, climate, uh, genetics, and then even like the human factor of how they harvest and how they ferment and dry the beans. Uh, so just like wine, you know, uh, Merlots from, let's say, somewhere in France are going to taste different from Merlots in California. And it's not just because of genetics, because those are the same, but, you know, how people work with it. So. Um, from different areas like Peru is going to be like a high fat chocolate, Ecuador is going to be a low fat chocolate, Madagascar is going to be a high acidity chocolate, Ecuador is going to be a low acidity chocolate. Uh, and so today we're going to taste it in order of acidity. So we're going to start with Ecuador and go to Belize, Peru, and then finally Madagascar. And we're kind of work our way up that kind of acidity ladder, which is a really nice way to taste because uh, it's just easier to kind of pick up on things as they kind of build. So. Yeah. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. I do have a question, though. How does climate play into the, ca the growth of a cacao bean? Well, uh, some, sometimes the climate helps to uh, kind of create the setting for the right type of genetics. Mm -hmm. A lot of um, like genetic uh, types can't be transplanted very well mm -hmm. because they have adapted to that microclimate. So that's one way. Uh, like a wet year will produce kind of different um, types of kind of flavors. Um, like uh, proximity to the equator can affect uh, the amount of fat or the hardness of that fat because fat is like 50% of the cocoa bean and so it's an important part of it. So if, let's say you're in Ecuador or close to the equator, uh, you're gonna have like a softer fat and maybe less of it. Whereas if you're further away, it's gonna be maybe a harder fat and more of it, yeah. I never would have known it was that involved, that detailed. All right, Anna, well, which one are we gonna start off with first? So we're going to start off with the Ecuador, okay. and this is one of my favorites. And I love how you have these little images on here representative of the region, right? Yes, this is a leopard. Jaguar. Jaguar. Leopard stripes. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have known. <laughs> I wouldn't have known. <laughs> okay, so the first thing really is to look at the color. This is... Uh, genetically, this is a very dark bean, so you can see um, it's a dark color, and um, you also are looking at the snap when you're tasting. And really, when we say for tasting chocolate, you you just t you take a moment. You know, so many people get chocolate in front of them; it, they're thinking of it as a candy, and you just like throw it all in your well, mouth you, like, and chew it up. And like, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. So good. But you know, for us, this is a new way of looking at chocolate. It's, it's a fine food to be appreciated slowly, so it's like taking a minute to look at it, smell the aroma, and then and then take a bite. So, if you would like to, yeah. There we go. Okay. Me too. Yeah, you can do that. We'll let you, Robbie. Uh, let's, let's all jump. Robbie and I will do it. And Anna. Yeah. Like we can't leave you guys. <laughs> what should I be tasting? What are the the notes and the flavors? Mm. This is a very traditionally chocolatey chocolate. Mm. Uh, it's fudgy. The high note here is um, rather than like something acidic, like a fruit, it's like more of like a honey, like a, a high note of bananas and honey, and um, almost like it's like a s'more in a chocolate. Like it's graham crackery, because those graham crackers have that honey. There's a little bit of like toasted marshmallow, but it's all because of you know that origin. So it's just cocoa beans and sugar. We didn't add s'mores to it, you know. I feel like you should like just be the person on the street that tells people about this because <laughs> what you just said, I was like, oh, you won me over. Even, even without tasting it, I'm like, that sounds divine. Yeah. That's so good. All right, you guys, what's next? Okay, the Belize is next. And um, let's take a look at it here. 
So, so this farm, it's actually a cooperative of Mayan farmers in Belize. And um, an organization has come in and done a lot to help them with their fermentation and drying to get their quality up so they can get a better price for their cacao beans. So, um, yeah, we've been working with these guys for a couple of years now. All right. And I can buy it. And what uh, are the, the flavors in this one? So, for this one, this is more of an earthy balanced chocolate. There's a little bit of sort of dried fruit fig in there that gives it a little bit of brightness, but then it finishes with this lovely sort of earthy, smoky, kind of lingering flavor, That's which is really nice. The, the huge difference mm -hmm. between mm -hmm. those two. So you'll also notice it feels silkier. That has to do with the amount of fat. Naturally, there is more fat in this chocolate than there is in the Ecuador. And so it tastes almost kind of like just, just silkier because of that. I like that. Okay, next up we have, how do I say this? Um, you say Marañón. Marañón. Where's that from? <laughs> that's Peru. That's okay. up uh, on the, um, <laughs> yeah, that's on the Amazon side of the uh, Andes down there. And uh, it's kind of a high altitude cacao, which is actually really rare. Uh, cacao usually likes low altitude, hot, humid, coastal usually. This one's up around, I think, 4,000 feet. 40% of the beans in that cacao is, are white, which is crazy. So that the result is a white? chocolate. White? Yeah. I didn't know they were white. Yeah. So the result is a chocolate that's light in color. <clears throat> if you compare that to the uh, yeah, Ecuador, that, it's hard, right? might be hard to see on camera, but uh, it's going to be a light colored chocolate, mm -hmm. kind of like a sandstone almost. But it's a high acidity chocolate, um, and it's also a high fat chocolate. Mm -hmm. So you might get like grape, uh, grapefruit. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, roasted kind of peanuts, and um, I can tell the difference. Fatty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. All right. This is the this is the one that was on the Anthony Bourdain show. Oh, interesting. Where, yeah. So he went to Peru and he found this little farm and he was like, "Look at these white beans." And he like, I don't know, I don't know what he did after that. <laughs> we got those. Yeah. So that's what we've got. We were, Excellent. We were the we were the we were the first American company to bring those beans in and work with those. So, wow. yeah. Fantastic. All right, you guys. Now we have Madagascar. What is this little critter called? <laughs> I can't even remember what it's called. Anyway. Uh, it's a ring-tailed lemur. Oh, it, I did a ring-tailed lemur. I should know that, but I don't. But anyway, I do now. So this is from Madagascar. What are some of the notes and flavors we have in here? Yeah. This, this one is, I think, fantastic, especially people that are new to our style of chocolate making, which is very flavor forward. Because the Madagascar bar is bright citrusy it tastes like you're putting a piece of fruit in your mouth it's just for a dark chocolate it really flips on its head what you think dark chocolate can be um, so for me yeah this is my favorite it's it's very light again light in color um, but also a, a higher cocoa butter chocolate so it has that nice sort of um, smooth silky texture mm -hmm. but it's just an all-round wonderful chocolate I really like that I like them all. It's hard. It's like choosing a favorite child for you guys. I feel like it would be because you're like, oh, so good. But that I like that one. Yeah, yeah we, we, mm -hmm. we call this one the gateway chocolate because it's it's dark chocolate, right? You think about traditional dark chocolate flavor. It, this is not that flavor. It's fruity. It's bright. It's it citrusy. It's nutty. It has no sort of uh, similarity to dark chocolate, yet it's 75% cacao. So it kind of makes you think. You're like, okay, how is that possible? He's got, I mean, it's genetics, it's soil, it's, it's climate, it's all that stuff. It's all, it's all there. Wow. <laughs> that's just incredible. You only have the two ingredients, the cacao beans and the sugar. Right. And that's how you get that flavor based yeah. off the different region. And then last of all, we have Mid-Mountain Blend. What's right. this one? Yeah, well, this one's really exciting for us. This is our first blend bar. And it was a little bit of a hint that we were moving to Park City, mm. put a moose on the front and the yeah. Mid-Mountain. But we were really, with the four origins that we work with, we were trying to find a really nice balanced blend. It's a little bit sweeter at 70%, so I feel like it's a little bit more approachable for people that are just getting into sort of dark chocolate or, or craft chocolate. And um, yeah, we feel like we've really come out with a well-balanced chocolate bar. Excellent. Okay, last one. <laughs> Here we go. Oh yeah, you have to get in on that action. <laughs> The nice thing about this one is it, because it's a blend, we were able to kind of dictate the final flavor. Mm. So we, we chose specific ratios of each origin, found out what was best, and kind of went for it. So we, we wanted a chocolate that was balanced and interesting. So mm. traditional chocolate flavor with a hint of 
of that Madagascar that's got that like kind of it piques your interest. You're like, well, why? Okay, that tastes really good, but why? Right? Mm -hmm. So. Oh, you guys, that is amazing. Thank you so much for taking us on this mini tour of the world, if you will, through chocolate. This is just delightful. Remind us where we can find and check you out because it's not just chocolate they have here. Also, I saw some brownies. You have sipping hot chocolate. You have coffee, right? right? Yeah, we have we have a few different things to offer. Definitely like an array of coffee drinks, if you like coffee, um, mochas, hot chocolates, sipping chocolates. And we do toast with chocolate almond spread, oh house-made oh. granola. So if you want to stop by and get breakfast... So, well, yeah. thank you so much, Robbie and Anna. A pleasure to be here with you today. Be sure to check out Ritual Chocolate right here in Park City.